So this is where we put all together now with energy and forces and work and maybe a little kinematics thrown in as well. Don't worry, we'll take this step by step. So first, we are looking at the force that must be supplied by an elevator cable to produce a certain acceleration against such and such a force. Since we're given force and acceleration, that's a big hint that we should be using F equals MA. So to do F equals MA, we need the free body diagram. There's an elevator cable that supplies some kind of tension, and there is, of course, mg pulling downwards. They give us some kind of acceleration. Uh, I guess we assume it's upward, because it's positive. So since the acceleration is upward, the friction force is going to be downwards. So we know m, we know a is equal to t minus the friction minus mg, and you work out the t. Isolating t on one side by adding everything on the other, which makes sense because the tension has to lift up the elevator to speed it up, as well as to work against the friction, as well as to overcome the weight of the elevator. So we have all the numbers giving us a tension of, or you may say 16.1 kilonewtons. Yep, since we're given force and acceleration, using F equals MA gets us our part A. Part B, how much work is done by the cable lifting? So we're given displacement now as well, and they want work focusing on what they're asking for. Work, of course, is the parallel force times your displacement. In this case, they're asking us about how much work does the cable do, which is the tension. And that's already parallel to your straight up and down displacement. In fact, straight up displacement, same direction, positive. So basically we take our part A answer and multiply by 20 meters and you get a nice big number of joules. Get a clean slate for part C. What is the final speed of the elevator if it starts from rest? Here, I'm gonna show you two separate ways to solve this one, because that's always an option. We actually have enough information here to do it from kinematics, way back in the first couple chapters that we did, because what were we given? We're given that our original speed is zero. We want to know our final speed. We are given my acceleration in the positive direction. And we're also given the displacement of 20 meters. Everything but time, we can use 2a delta d is equal to vf squared minus vo squared. Then vf squared is just 2a times delta d because vo is equal to zero. And to get Vf, we square root both sides. So Vf is equal to, to 0 0.8 meters per second squared times 20 meters, giving you square root of 32 meters square per second square. Number wise, it's 5.656 meters per second. So that's one way to solve it using kinematics. Another way to solve it is to use energy. And we always write this. Of course, this tends to be easier if there's no external work. We can use this more quickly and often, but we can use this in this case because we're giving all the forces anyways. Quick sketch, at time one, you have no speed. This time one, time two, you're up here now, and you're 20 meters taller than you used to be and you also have some kind of V final that you're not sure what it is yet. In between, of course, you have friction going on and you also have your cable tension pulling as well. 
tracking my various variable. We have zero and zero to begin with. If we say this is h equals zero down here, and up at 20 meters, we have some kind of final speed that we don't know. In terms of work, as I was mentioning, you have work from the friction and also work from the tension. From the friction, the friction acts opposite to your displacement. So you have a negative friction force was 200 Newton and the same displacement applies. Tension we worked out was significantly larger than our friction times my 20 meters. And then the rest, we just kind of sub in. So those two go away because they were both zero. We'll keep the sum of work as a variable for now. Then we have one half mv2 square, which we don't know, plus mgh2. Solving for v2 square is the sum of work minus mgh2 over 1 half m. Keeping in mind what my total work is, total work is work done by cable minus work done by friction minus my mgh or over 1 half my mass which surprise surprise is the same answer as we got before just to show you that the two methods are equivalent sometimes it's easier to use one sometimes it's easier to use another as long as the work is easy to figure out then the energy method is perfectly valid finally for part d they want the work that went into thermal energy this we haven't dealt with very much for the most part we will take that your work done by friction is usually going into thermal energy just picture yourself rubbing your hands together by and then you feel the friction and then it heats up that's what we're trying to say this is especially interesting to us because thermal energy is harder to recover back into mechanical energy unlike potential gravitational energy usually things that go into thermal energy we consider that as lost lost to the world work of course is ff times delta d we're just concerned with the amount right now we know that it's negative that's why it's taking energy away from the system is taking the useful mechanical energy and dumping into thermal energy so we have 200 newton times 20 meters and we get 400 sorry 4000 joules or 4 kilojoules that's how much energy went into thermal energy through our 20 meters of displacement and from that we can talk about efficiency as well but we're not going to so there hopefully you can see how all these different concepts kind of come together to describe different facets of the same situation and hopefully you can recognize when we employ one way versus another or both <laughs>